at the Sundance Film Festival, Marina R. Gorbak won a Best Director Award for the TRT co-production Klondike. At the center of the story is Erga and Tolik. They're a married couple about to have a baby. And then the Russian mercenaries march in. The Ukrainian family's land is suddenly turned into a war zone. A mortar shell even destroys a wall of their home. And the conflict also tears apart their friends and family, with both sides vying for the couple's allegiance. The film depicts this tragedy in the Donbass region's picturesque yet haunting landscape, a setting that Erga refuses to leave. What we're left with is her failure to live an ordinary life under extraordinary circumstances. The online publication Film Threat sums it up this way. War is hell. It turns us into beasts. Quite the topical message, as Russia has amassed 100,000 troops on Ukraine's border. We're now joined by Marina Argorbach. Hi there, welcome to Showcase and congratulations. It really is a huge achievement. Tell us how you feel. Thank you. Um, it's very important to get an award because film just started its career. It was the very first screening and I think that that kind of awards will help to me to be watched by audience and for the timely situation in Ukraine this movie is absolutely very important. Exactly. I was going to come to that. Uh, this film was screened on Sundance during a rising tension in Ukraine at the moment. What did it mean to you? Uh, actually, this uh, tension, yeah, it looks like it's rising because it exists in media, but uh, Ukrainian war is since 2014 and it's not new at all. And even I'm in Ukraine now at my parents' house and I'm observing people around me. Yes, it's stressed. It's, um, you know, like... Um, has big um, pushing on people's life, especially on their, on their psychology. But if you would ask people, what are you going to do tomorrow? They just continue their daily life because they get used to live in the war since 2014. And it's also very interesting. And I think it's also very related to Klondike, where is life and war just uh, going on um, to parallel lines. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the story behind uh, the name of the movie. I mean, you were just mentioning it, but let's delve a little deeper. Why did you want to name this Klondike? Uh, Klondike is the territory in North America, actually, in Canada. It's uh, related to Gold Rush and um, Donbass, where is now happening war. It's, Donbass is border of Russia and Ukraine. It's the biggest industrial district of all post-Soviet countries and I think to talk about land as about geography and as about destiny of one country is very important in a topic of real reasons of war. Okay, Marina, I want to go back to the very beginning when you came up with the idea of making this movie. Tell us what, were, what was your motivation? Uh, it is based on a real event. Uh, I mean, I think it's in 2014, a Malaysia Airlines passenger flight uh, was shot down over uh, Donbass region in Ukraine, killing 300 people. Why was this event so important for you and why did you want to base, it, uh, base the movie on it? Uh, I think it was very uh, huge uh, event, you know, like it's very hard to go on and not to remember about that thing because it was it was shut down by very old rocket and it was brought from uh, one country to another without any legal permission and so on. It's of course not our business as filmmakers. We are not judge or court. They have they should give this answer, but still that was a very big dramatical event and year after year. Uh, first year or second year of that uh, catastrophe, it just went out from media and we were thinking with the crew that if that huge international catastrophe is possible to be forgotten, what 
it will be to the local people, you know, like speechless uh, people. They are not uh, Europeans or Americans and they have only uh, their local government uh, back of them, local government, I mean Ukrainian and Ukrainian villages and districts. And it's also very uh, strange how things are going because this is occupied territory and not all people on occupied territory are pro-Russians as generally media is uh, telling about. So it was uh, this our conversation in crew and I was non-stop thinking about this topic and I was thinking how to tell that life of one Ukrainian is equal to life of one foreigner and please no one should be... Um, no one should be ignored or about anyone we should forget. It's absolutely impossible just pass through all that events and to behave like nothing happened. It's impossible. Okay. Uh, you are an Istanbul-based Ukrainian filmmaker. So I wonder where you were or what you, you were doing in 2014 when this uh, crash happened. I was, uh, I was in Ukraine with my family, with children and with my husband. Yeah, we are based in uh, Istanbul, but we are really mentally related to Ukraine a lot. And um, uh, we were in film festival and it was summer and it was my birthday also, 17th July is my birthday. And it was just suddenly like bombed to our hard house i would say it was very huge and um, um and and yes i was impressed a lot and i was feeling myself like yeah you know i afraid i afraid for myself for family for um, my family who live in, in kiev and um, in 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 a few months or even one year after i just decided that Maybe maybe I can maybe I can tell the story of my feelings because to afraid that long is also not a way to to resist violence. There should be something more. There should be actions. And I have still an artist woman voice, and I am observing lots of families, uh, women stories, children stories, and um, that all come together in a script. Mm -hmm. And, well, end screen uh, in your movie states that the film is dedicated to women. So I want to ask you about uh, how important or how different than men's role is women's role during uh, times like these or during uh, wars like Donbass? Um, you know, dedicating to woman sentence uh, came up only after we finished movie. It was like after editing finished and everything. And uh, when I was just watching uh, draft of a movie, I just see that we created a story and we created a picture, you know, like a film uh, where woman is stronger than war. And it was obviously that we have all rights to put this sentence in the end as dedication to life. Is this a feminist movie? You can decide when you will watch. <laughs> I watched it. I, I kind of feel like it I'm is. But then I want to hear, of course, what uh, mm -hmm. you have to say. But obviously, I understand if you don't want to categorize it that way. I, I think I uh, I made very honest movie. I didn't um, use any kind of propaganda or he heroistical um, messages. You know, I just was trying to shoot about people, and I think that uh, uh, women who stay in occupied territories and that women who are still continue life, and they have their principles. They continue their you know like. Um, Base, base where they are. They belong to their houses. They don't want just to leave their place where, where they live. They still believe that they can fight against militarism and so on. I think that um, this is very huge and um, um, big event uh, to tell. It's absolutely necessary to be told about. Mm -hmm. And I think that my experience being mother and women and artists, it can, it can help a bit. Well, it definitely does. Well, one last question before we wrap up. 
Is there a message you want to send uh, from here as a Ukrainian filmmaker, as the world is experiencing the tension in Ukraine right now? Yes, I want to thank so much to TRT, 12 Punto, and to Cultural Ministry of Turkey, because Turkey is co-production country for Klondike. It was absolutely necessary support to finish the movie. And uh, generally, I want to thanks to Turkey for support. Uh, um, yeah, it's, it's big what you're making. All right, Marina, thanks so much for taking the time to join us today and congratulations once Thank you. more. Good luck Thank in Berlinale. You.